Good morning. It is me, your humble neighborhood friendly stroke assaulter. Um, it is Tuesday, I believe. So, anyways, I um, haven't made a video in a couple days. A couple of reasons. One, it's been Canadian Thanksgiving. I'm in Canada, so luckily we celebrate the great Canadian turkey massacre. Um, during this video, no, no turkeys were harmed. However, a couple days ago, one was consumed with gravy. Um, and yeah, the turkey was a vegan turkey. It was, you know, it only ate fruits and veg. So, uh, and then kind of had a bit of a sinus cold thing, which really knocked the wind out. So on Sunday, went to a friend's house for Friendsgiving. Um, there were about 18 people there and kids. Um, kids were all younger-ish, like seven or under, I believe. Um, a couple babies, but that's not a big deal. So, there are 18 adults, I'm guessing, and a couple of kids. It was really busy. Um, and I'll be honest, it was difficult, very difficult. Um, I had a great time, don't get me wrong. The food was amazing, the company was excellent. Um, uh, those, for the person that hosted the event... Those ridiculous little bacon-wrapped stuffing bites, they should be made illegal, and only I should be allowed to consume them from here going forward. Um, yeah, those were ridiculous. Um, so I went, and a couple times I had to go outside uh, for basically a quiet break, because um, there was so much ambient noise, so much movement, I just couldn't track it all. Um, unfortunately... It made it difficult at times for my brain to work because there was just so much activity, so much noise. So I realized I'm going to still struggle for a while with ambient noise and, and whatnot. Uh, and then yesterday I did laundry. Uh, unfortunately, the whole bending over thing still uh, is difficult. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to ask my GP for a referral to a neurologist just to see what that's about because is that the stroke is that the medication or is that a combination of stroke and medication well the great thing is they, they don't really know per se um, and the stroke clinic wasn't really their avenue of investigation because they were just there to make sure I wasn't about to stroke out again uh, and that's not looking like a potential and as much as I would enjoy another stroke yeah no not doing that <laughs> So I go to see my GP tomorrow, unrelated matter, uh, just part of the yearly physical. Um, fun fact, have your yearly physical after a stroke. It kind of changes the mood. Um, <clears throat> that being said, uh, so I'm going to ask my GP for a referral to a neurologist to see what that's about. <laughs> Because I'm not so keen on this whole balance thing. Like, I still have, I still struggle with balance, um, which can make days difficult. Like, let's talk about doing laundry, right? You have to bend over to pick your stuff up. You have to bend over to take it to the laundry. You have to bend over to put it down and then put stuff from basket into dryers and washers and whatnot. So, there's a lot of bending over. Um, and right now, because the fact that I can't bend over all that well or effectively would not make me very popular in prison. So, you know, not that I want to be popular in prison. Let's just put that out there. Um, yeah, it, it makes the life difficult because if just, just use the laundry analogy, you're doing laundry and you drop a sock. Well, you know, you can have to pick it up. Um, you know, you... I've tried to develop certain strategies to make it so I don't have to bend over as much, but you still may have to do that. Uh, you know, grocery shopping. They put stuff on bottom shelves, and depending on the aisle you're on, depends on how many shelves there's going to be. So that can now become difficult. So I appreciate bending, unfortunately, is kind of a an occupational necessity for life. You know, you... I can't demand the world ignore anything from about two and a half, about three and a half feet to ground level and never put anything there. That's just not realistic. Um, 
So I'm going to have to figure that out. Um, now, I've noticed I've got a 38 subscriber. Hello, number 38. Um, I don't know if I know you or not. And if I do, great. And if I don't, hey, happy to have you. Um, so the stroke itself, you know, that was a very immediate event very like it's in your face and happening the whole recovery well it's difficult right um i was told the other day that it can take up to six months for the swelling in the brain because there's no muscles in your brain right um it's not like you can strain your brain you know, or pull your brain um you know uh so there's no muscle up there, right? So it's not, so whatever swelling has occurred has to naturally subside. You know, kind of like you're a 13 year old boy in math class and popped a surprise boner and they want you to answer a question on the board. You just gotta wait for that to go away. Um, so, and because they're not, you know, wanting to inflict more radiation upon you, you know, in, in doing more tests, they're they're not going to just randomly put you in a CT or a PET or an MRI or whatever else, right? They don't like just randomly putting radiation in your head because that could cause cancer or maybe superpowers. Um, you know, I still have headaches and I'm a little bit three months out. I can still get confused at times. I'm a little bit over three months out. Crowds can be an issue. When I was at thank their Friendsgiving dinner, there were a lot of people in the kitchen, and I'm just trying to move through the living room into the kitchen to do something. I forget what. And there was just a lot of activity, and I had to stop. Like, just stood in place, because I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. Like, there's too much movement. I can't track it all. Um, so it's just difficult to function at times and, and that's nobody's fault, right? That, that's, that's no one. Let me just be clear. I'm not laying or throwing or casting blame on at or near anyone. It's just, you're trying to live your life and do what you normally do. And I'm trying to live my life and do what I normally do. Unfortunately, you're a lot quicker than I am and your brain works a lot better than mine. So in that event, just trying to navigate through eight or nine people through a kitchen to get to whatever for you would be easy for me i'm trying to track scan you know move track scan move and then you start moving along the wall and I'm like, oh fuck where do you come from you know you know and then all the noise and it's difficult right because you see people engaging in conversation and you want to go engage in conversation with them, but you know, just by sitting down at the table, that in and of itself could be a pitfall. Um, you know, uh, and, and I didn't really know some of the people that were there at all. They were relatives or <laughs> friends of friends and things. So, uh, after dinner, it had calmed down and people had left. I decided I'm going to attempt to go be social. So I sat down at the table um, and just tried to participate in the conversation. At one point, there was a logical place where I could participate and started to have aphasia because I was a bit overwhelmed. And, and I had to say, you know, sorry, I had a stroke three months ago. Um, yeah, and I get the fact that I don't look like you're tropish, arch typical, you had a stroke person. I'm not all, you know, I'm that that's not me. Um, and unfortunately, that's not a lot of people, right? There are people that, depending on the severity of their stroke, the type of stroke, um, you know, the, the, the type of treatment they were given or not given on their stroke, right? You know, there, there are many, many potential outcomes. Um, and I appreciate that people might accept a little bit of skepticism on their part. Um, unfortunately, it's it's part of my reality. 
Um, there's not much you can do about that. Another part of my reality is Facebook. Um, I'm a member of three different Facebook groups, uh, Stroke Talk, uh, Young Stroke Survivors, and the Stroke Coffee House. Well, I'm going to do something that's going to be fun for me, and I'm going to share the results with you. Um, there is this magical doctor that you hear about on these Stroke Facebook groups um, that has herbal cures and and mo motions and potions and lotions and salves and creams oh my that'll cure a stroke <clears throat> well it's all bunk it's woo it's complete woo it's bullshit it's you know who knows right it, but it's let's just be clear here you cannot cure a stroke there's no cure for a structural defect in the brain, right? You cannot rejuvenate, rebuild, you know, you cannot reincarnate dead cells. Once a cell in the body is dead, it's done. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> once a part of your brain is atrophied because of lack of blood flow or damage, that part of your brain is inevitably useless, irrevocably unfunctional, right? there's nothing you can do about it. There's, there's no way for them to do anything to make it work again. Now, the brain will rewire itself, right? It will find new ways to do old things, right? It, it'll find a way to reroute that circuitry. You will learn how to get your brain to do what you need it to do again. That takes time. But there is no magical lotion, potion, cream, or salve. <laughs> And I've seen three or four people on at least two of these stroke groups post these wonderful, both this magical doctor with roots and herbs and lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Well, I'm going to create an email address and I'm going to email this doctor and I'm going to entertain them in conversation. And then I'm going to share the results with you fine people. Um, there's another... Um, herbal remedy that I've encountered online uh, that I'm doing research on right now uh, and I'm going to do half hour 20 minutes debunking it because it's just farcical <clears throat> it's absolute just garbage um, and there are these people that promote these bullshit cures for stroke um, let's just be clear here you cannot cure a structural it's not like Okay, you can cure certain diseases. Like you can you can be cured of cancer. Right? Leukemia can be cured. Right? However, certain types of cancers, there's a high potential they can't cure it. Uh, my grandfather, uh, my dad's side, died of brain cancer. There's no fucking cure for it at that point. You're dead. Okay. Parkinson's. There's no cure for Parkinson's. ALS or Lou Gehrig's. There's no cure for that. Alzheimer's. No cure for that. And what do Alzheimer's, ALS, and Parkinson's all have in common? Yeah, the brain. When you get a brain-based disease disorders function, right? there's no cure. There's... That's not to say that there aren't medical interventions that can be performed, that you can be involved in, that can assist you, that can help your function in life, you know, how well you can live your life, your quality of life, right? There's not to say things can't be done to help you live, right? But you still have that thing. There's, there's no cure. So using my skeptical eye, um, I'm going to engage this individual in a conversation and we're going to see what they have to say. I'm assuming it's going to take a couple of weeks to get some really juicy information. But that being said, I'm going to create an email today. Um, I'm going to create a backstory that's complete farce. Like that any one could see through quite readily. And 
we will see what happens. Yes, because I'm assuming this magical doctor with these magical herbs will magically ask me for, you know, a ridiculous sum of money. Which I'm going to say, hey, I live in Ontario. OHIP should cover that, so you should talk to OHIP. Yes. Yeah. That being said. No. So, for those of you that have had a stroke... Um, and you're on some of these Facebook groups, or you get these random messages about try this magical potion, this lotion, these, this herb, um, scorpion testicles, whatever the case may be. It's never going to work, right? Um, they're snake oil salesmen, they're charlatans, they're frauds. They're people merely looking to remove your money from their wallet, or your wallet, sorry, and put it in their pocket. That's all it is. But definitely, scientifically, there is no absolutely zero evidence uh, that any of these herbs will work. Um, or supplements, or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, there, there's no magical diet. There's no magical pill. You have a structural defect after your stroke to the brain. Right? Um... Depending on the severity of the stroke, the type of stroke, um, will depend on the size, nature, type, and quality of the defect. Right? There's physically something altered with your brain. It's as simple as it gets. Um, and I'm going to say this. If the drug companies could find a way to cure stroke and charge you a ridiculous amount of money to do it, they would have done it by now. Right? If they could find a way to cure stroke and line their pockets at the same time, they would have done it. So I'm going to create the email address now and create some ridiculous backstory. Yeah. And we're just going to email them and see what magical things they have to say. And I'm going to create an identity that doesn't exist. I'm going to mention doctors and hospitals that don't exist. I'm going to create a backstory that like a six-year-old could see through. It is going to be completely, irrevocably, 100% nonsense. Total, total nonsense. Right? So, should be interesting, because it, it kind of makes me a bit angry when people want to try to exploit other people. And, because there are people in the stroke community, um, they're going to read these ads, and, and they may believe them, or their caregivers may believe them. And, for whatever reason, they're going to latch what little hope they have left on that non-existent chance, and they're going to start throwing money away, right? Um, so, yeah, that is basically my goal, is to see where this story leads. Anyways, so I'm going to run away. I've got physio at 2.30 with the evil physiotherapist. Um... And then at that point, I've got my GP tomorrow and physiotherapy again. And I'm going to get my GP to write me a couple of referrals. And I'll let you know how that goes. But ultimately, when it comes to your recovery, right, your rehabilitation, your reintegration, um, you need to be in the driver's seat, right? Uh, like I said during the self-advocacy video. So you got to make sure that you're kind of in control of this little funness that's called stroke uh, and the recovery as best you can. And then if you happen to like what you've been watching, right, uh, please like, share, subscribe, share with your friends. If you know someone that's currently either going themselves through the throes of recovery, rehabilitation, reintegration from a stroke, or someone helping support someone doing the same, please recommend the channel to them. Like, share, subscribe. Um, if there's something you want to see me cover, either leave a comment down below or you can email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com and then we're going to play fun email games with these numpties that 
have this magical cure and we'll see how that goes and then from there if you happen to either see in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke uh, that being facial droop uh, inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all uh, inability to smile equally effectively or at all slurred stuttering speech inappropriate word usage for situation or context um, inability to stand unaided general body weakness or weakness on one side please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911 something so simple can save a life oh and thank you number 38